it's amazing how God th works things out. Uh, actually, I mean, he, he's right on part of that about God is real. I preached that message that day on how can we know God is real. How can we know God is real? And I think that's amazing how God works that, those things out because uh, I'd never met Jeff before. Didn't know that an atheist was going to be in the service that morning. And then for God to lay it on my heart to preach a message on how can we know that God is real. Because why don't an atheist believe in God? Because he don't believe he's real. He can't prove that he's real. Why do, why do they believe? Why would they not believe? Because they don't know he's real and they're not going to put their faith in something they can't see. And uh, so, but you know what? That hits home with all of us, whether we believe there was a God and we just didn't have faith in Christ, whether we was an atheist or whatever. That hits home with all of us at one day, one point in time in our life when we realize that there is a God and there's a Savior that died on a cross for our sins. Amen. And uh, I'm glad it hit home with me. I'm glad that I've been saved by the grace of God. And uh, Although my testimony's not the same as Jeff's and yours ain't the same as mine, we all have faith in, who have faith in Christ have a testimony that God has made a change in us. And not only a change in here, but a change in our eternal destination. Uh, we're not going the same place we used to go. We were, we were headed and we're not going the same places here that we used to go because God made a change in our heart. And I thank God that it takes God to do something like that. I hope you realize how big of a deal that is. This morning, if you have your Bibles, let's turn to Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Uh, when Brother Jeff spoke to me about giving his testimony, he said, Brother, you know, he, was want, he asked me two favors. He said, can I get up and give my word of testimony? And I said, yeah, sure you can. And uh, I want you to. And if anybody else wants to give their word of testimony, you're free to do that too right now. It don't bother me if God lays it on your heart to say something. Uh, we try to be spirit-led around here. And if God is uh, leading you to say something that's going to glorify Him, I don't have a problem with that. But um, and another thing he asked me, he said, could I hear those scriptures preached from again? Now, on the day, you know, on that week that I, it's my anniversary. Now, you know me as a pastor, I don't usually too often plan to preach from somewhere. It just happens or either I, God gives it to me earlier in the week. Well, in my first thought when Brother Jeff said, can you preach from those scriptures or on that thought again? Uh, how can we know God is real? He wanted to hear it again. My first thought in, is, is no. I'll be honest with you, though. No. I've never done that. I've never had a request from somebody to preach something and then I've done it. Not that I ever know of. Not too often have I ever preached from the same uh, 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 same kind of sermon or same type sermon or same title or, or not too often do I even I, a lot of times one of my faults is I'll skip over scriptures I preached from before because I think people get tired of hearing it and I had to get out of that because there may be times that God is going to use that same scripture he used again he used it before and he wants to use it again so what I've done is I quit trying to remember where I preached from <laughs> I quit trying to write in my, I don't write in my Bible anywhere where I preached from because sometimes I may skip over that when God wants to use that. And my first thought, Brother Jeff, to be honest with you, when we got off the phone that day was no. But then as I prayed and I studied, oh, I, oh, I had all kind of other thoughts come to my mind. I studied on two or three different things this week and had another sermon or two completely just kind of embedded in my mind to preach. And then this morning I got up and I began to study and pray. And when I did, God kept leading me back to Romans chapter 1 and said, you know, if I used it before, I can use it again. And, and say, you know, the same way Jeff got saved through the preaching of God's Word out of that Scripture, millions before Jeff ever came got saved from those same Scriptures. Millions after will get saved from those same Scriptures if the Lord does not come before them. So God directed my heart that way and I couldn't get away from it. And God directed my heart to go back and read Romans chapter 1, verse 16 through 20 again and preach on the thought, how can we know God? Is real. Some of you may have heard me preach and say some of the same things I'll say today. Some things may be new, whatever it is. Uh, God can use it again, just like He did back then, and I wouldn't do it if God hadn't told me. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, that is, it is written, The just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them. Ain't that something? Because that which may be known of God may be 
known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it to them. Verse 20, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power in Godhead so that they are without excuse. You know, a lot of people say, what about these people do this? What about these people living in other countries? What about people that don't know what you know and all this stuff? The Bible says they're without excuse. So that's pretty harsh. No, it's not. Because he said the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead. You know what God's saying? I've showed you enough yeah. to prove I'm real. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this time to come together. We want to thank you, God, for saving us, for blessing us the way you have. God, you've been so good to us. We're allowed to sit together again in heavenly places. And we ask this morning that you bless the reading of your word. As you've done so many times before, we ask God this morning, Lord, you give the increase. And Lord, that you bless. Lord, you remove every hindering thought from our mind. For some may sit here this morning hindered by thoughts in their mind. They may be hindered by something that happened before church, something that happened in church, something that they're facing in life. We ask God you remove every hindering and thought from our mind that we may worship you in spirit and in truth that we may receive the things from God this morning that you want us to receive that you know that we need not that we want but that you know that we need and God I pray that you do it again that you will bless the reading of your word give the increase and help us to receive it with gladness we want to thank you and praise you for Calvary and for all that you've done for us and we ask God that you do it again in somebody else's life here again today in Jesus name we pray and ask all these things and amen how can we know that God is real? The Bible says invisible things of Him from the creation of the world. Invisible th things that you cannot see that's been here from the very creation of the world are clearly seen. How? Being understood by the things that are made. Even His eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. How many people do you know in this world try to give you excuses why they can't be a God? They give you all kinds of excuses of why if this is if God is real, there's why did this happen? If, if, if this there can't be a God because look at what happened here and look at what happened here and all the uh, ungodly things that's taking place in this world. If there's a God in heaven, how can He send people to a place called hell? They got all kinds of questions, but really all those questions are as excuses of why they don't want to submit themselves to a holy God that's greater than anything in the world and all things consist by him and all things are made by him but we need we all have to come to a place in our life where it's not about what somebody else says or somebody else does or somebody else believes or what happens in this world or what we can explain or what we cannot explain it comes down to a place in our life and boils down to a point to where we have to have our own personal faith in God in heaven we have to have our own personal faith in the son that he sent to a Calvary to die on a cross it comes down to that point in time in our life where it's a personal issue. If you're going to go to heaven, it's going to go by Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only way to heaven. And there's no other way. The Bible says if you have not the Son, you have not the Father. If you don't have the... Listen, believing there's a God just ain't good enough. I believe, the, I believe Paul, before he was Paul, he was Saul. And I believe when he was Saul, he believed there was a God. Because the Bible said he was, a, he was a zealous in the Jews' religion. The Jews believed there was a God. They just didn't believe in Christ. They didn't believe in Jesus. And I believe Saul was a religious man that believed believe there was a God. But Saul couldn't go to heaven. But when he became Paul, he got his name written in the Lamb's book of life. Why? Because his faith was in Jesus Christ. When that light shone round about him, he, he, he come to know that light, the light of the world, Jesus Christ. He came to know that light that convicted his heart. He came to know Jesus, the one that died on the cross for his sins. But before that, I'm telling you, he was without excuse because he knew there was a God. He knew there was a God, but he wouldn't put his faith in the Son. As a matter of fact, he persecuted the church because they preached Christ. He believed there was a God, but he didn't believe in Christ. He persecuted the church. He had Christians killed because he did not believe in Jesus Christ. But when Saul put his faith in Jesus Christ, he became Paul. That, ain't, that don't mean your name has to change. All that shows you is you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. And all things become new. And God is just saying he's showing you the big picture in one man's life. How God changed a man because he put his faith in Jesus Christ. He went from persecuting the church to preaching to the church. He went from wanting to kill Christians to wanting to see people live forever. I'm telling you, he was, life was changed because he put his faith in Jesus Christ. Yes. And he found out God was real. 
And God was real through Jesus Christ, His Son. Amen. The one that He used to persecute. Now, when you think about it, I, I want to give you a scenario here. I want to thought that how, God, how we know God is real. I want you to get this uh, picture in your mind. Today, I want to start out by giving you a picture of a family going to church. Uh, I want you to picture this family that's walking in the church and they go in the church and uh, they sing the songs like we sung. They come to altars and pray and they sit there and they give prayer requests and they hear the song sung, they pray the prayers and they do all this stuff and then they hear a preacher get up and preach a sermon about a God out of a book called the Word of God. And they hear all this and then they get ready to walk out and I want you to picture that child looking up at his parents and saying this to him and asking a question and saying... How can we know God is real? What would you answer to your child if he was walking out of church? After he's seen, after they, the little child, have seen all the worship. They've seen you praise the Lord. They've seen you sing the songs. Uh, they heard all the songs. They heard the prayer. They heard the preacher preach. They've seen the book being held by everybody called the Word of God. But then that child looked up at you and said, How can we know that God is real? After all we do in a service about God, but none of us have really seen him, so how do we know he's real? How can we know that that God that y'all are talking about, you're singing about, and you're praying to, how do we know that he's real the common answer for most believers is this we got to believe by faith ain't it that's what we say you got to believe by faith but for the critic or the unbeliever they'll say to that answer about believing by faith they'll say this they'll say to say it's all by faith is a cop out because if you say it's by faith you never have to prove anything that's what the critics say that's what the, uh, the unbeliever will say. That's a cop out because as long as you say it's by faith, no one can uh, say you're wrong because faith is believing without seeing. Therefore, you never have to show me anything to prove that God is real. That's a cop out. I've, I've heard atheists say that. I've heard that. I've read it in books. I've heard it said on radio and things like that. I've seen it on TV by people who don't believe in God that say by faith and saying that everything about God is by faith is a cop out because y'all Christians will never have to prove anything in that book to be real because faith is believing without seeing. Therefore, y'all ain't going to ever show us anything. It's a cop out. Now, this is not my answer. Because what they're saying is y'all can't, can't prove that God is real is what they're saying. That's what they're saying. Y'all can't prove God is real. Now this is not my answer to how we know if God is real, but I do have an answer. They can't prove God ain't real. They can't prove that there is no God. Show me the, the same way they look at us and say, show me there is a God, show me there's not one. There's a whole lot more evidence that there is one than there is, that there ain't. A whole lot more. In verse 9, uh, 17 through 19 is showing us that the righteousness of God is revealed uh, and it shows that the wrath of God is revealed and it, it showed unto them. But then the Bible says in verse 20, and it talks about the invisible things which would have to be by faith because it's invisible. And then he said, now by the things that are made. Those invisible things from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Now that sounds like a contradiction, <laughs> don't it? I mean, did that hit you the way it hit me when I read it? The invisible things are clearly seen? Well, the unbeliever would have a time with that one, wouldn't he? The critic would have a time with that one and say, boy, y'all's Bible's all messed up. It says invisible things are clearly seen. But then you've got to read the rest of the story. You don't pull out part of a verse and just say that's what it is. You've got to read and put all of it together like a puzzle. And the Bible says when you put it all the pieces together, it all makes sense. You see the picture. For the invisible things from the creation of the world are clearly seen. How? Being understood by the things that are made. See, God is a spirit. I can't see a spirit. But by the things which are made, I understand that God is real. I understand that by creation, that there had to be a creator. You don't have creation without a creator. You don't have all these things without somebody to create it. How did you get here? I've always said that. One of the biggest Proofs that God is real is a reproduction of man. It's hard for me to believe that a doctor is an atheist if they ever study the human body. Right. If they study the human body and see how complicated this human body is and the reproduction system of it, then they got to know that something is bigger than them and somewhere to make all this come to pass. It's amazing. When you look at the human brain, it's amazing. 
For a doctor to know what the human brain can store. For a, human, uh, for a doctor to look and examine the human brain and study it and find out all the facts about the human brain. How in the world can a doctor say, there ain't no God. Well, if evolution is real, why aren't we still evolving? From the tadpole and to, from the ape or whatever they think, you know, whatever they think, you know, they, they show the steps as the man comes up and, come, and gets to where we are. Why did it all stop? Because it ain't real. But guess what? As I started this sermon from the time I started to right now, there's probably been a hundred babies born in this world. Why? Because it's still happening the way God put it in place. It's still happening the way God set it up. Because God is real and God has proved it's real. Through the reproduction, I'm telling you, how do you take Adam and Eve and get to where we are today unless God is real? I'm telling you, if you figure it out one day, if you don't know it yet, one day you'll figure it out that, listen, it has to be a God to make that happen and to make, uh, what, what, what did that mean? Bill Maher said that time, he laughed and made fun of it. Most of y'all know Bill Maher. He's a well-known atheist. He has his own show on TV. He mocks, makes fun of everything about the Bible, about God. I mean, he just flat out will tell you God's not real. He'll laugh. I mean, he'll cuss the Word of God, cuss everything. I mean, he's the he's about the most aggravating. I can't watch him. Makes you want to reach through the TV and jerk him through it. Maybe one day he'll Google his name and this will come up online and he can get to see about it. I don't know. But what I'm telling you is he, he said, how in the world could somebody believe that a man named Jonah can be swallowed and put in a bed and live three days how in the world? And then, uh, and then he'd laugh and cuss a few times say, and they're going to spit him back out and the man's going to live after three days of being in a bed well. It takes an idiot to believe that kind of stuff. That's what he says. He, you're crazy if you believe that. Why is it so hard to believe that a man can live three days in a bed well when a man and a, a woman can live nine months in the belly of a woman? Never, ain't no air coming in. There's no air from the outside. There's nothing there. But a, a child can live three, for nine months in the belly of another person. How can that be if there is no God? How can that be? How can all that happen if there is no God? There has to be a God. There has to be. And for a doctor to know that, for a doctor to deliver babies the way they do, and doctors to do the things they do, and surgeries they do, and see how complicated about the heart and the brain and all this stuff, how can they say that all this came from nothing? But it started evolving from nothing and turned into something, and here we are. <laughs> it takes more faith to believe that crap than it does the, the Word of God. It takes more faith to believe that there is not a God than there is to believe there is a God. Right. Makes a whole lot more sense that there's a God, doesn't it? Back to the human brain. You think about it now. We think that these cell phones we have are just a, the bomb. It's not a bomb, really. We think it's the bomb. It's not going to blow up, I hope. We think this thing is amazing because this thing can, man, I'm telling you what, it can do so much. Do you know how much, mem how much storage this thing has? Man, that thing can... Man, you put it in there, a couple years later, go back and you find the same stuff you had in here you put in here a couple years ago, Brother Charles. If something don't happen to it. Don't drop it or something. But you know what? It's limited in storage. The computer, it's limited in what it can do. Oh, it can do a lot. The, the, the computer, it can store a lot. But it is limited in what it can do. It's limited in how much it can store. Do you know that? I heard a, stati a statistic the other day about the human brain and how many different thoughts it can contain in a second and store and remember for the rest of its life. Way more than any computer. And don't nobody have to jog it. Don't nobody have to refresh it. Nobody has to do this. Guess what? It's there. It's there for good. It's the human brain that God put in place so that you can exist in this world. If there's not a God, why wouldn't the eyes put in the back of the head? I ain't going to talk about the size of your fingers and your nose. But I'm telling you, there's all kinds of things 
Some of y'all got that. There's all kinds of things in this world, in this human body that proves there's a God. Amen. It proves there's a God. Isaiah 40 tells us that the earth is round. It's a circle, the Bible says. Y'all know that? Well, the first time I ever heard this thing was a circle, I said, there ain't no way. Why ain't we falling off of it when we get on bottom? Because it's rotating. You know, it's moving, right? It's moving. So, and, and, and the Bible talks about he that sits upon the circle of the earth. So then the Bible talks about, you know, this earth is round and, the, and we know that it's moving and, and all this stuff. And Isaiah got it right when he said that it is a circle. He got that right before any scientist ever figured that out. He got it right. And the same one that got it right about the circle of the earth got it right when he said a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son and his name shall be called Emmanuel. He got that right too. And if you put your faith in him, you You'll know that God is real. You'll quit asking questions. Is he real? You'll start telling people he's real if you'll put your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. How can we know God is real? By the things that are made, number one, by you. Amen. The fact that you're here, the fact that there's oxygen in the air, and guess what? You just happen to have lungs that need that oxygen. It has to live by what God put out here so you can breathe it in and live a life. Man, there's got to be a God. Got to be. I'm glad I know he's real. Amen. Go with me to Psalm 19. A lot of you know where I'm going with this. You have, you, you read your Bible anytime lately in Psalm, you know what these verses say. It's some of my favorite verses. Psalm 19 in verse 1. The Bible says in Psalm 19 and 1, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. These verses right here are telling us about the things that are seen, that prove to us that there is a God. The heavens declare the glory of God. The sky, the stars, the sun, and the moon, which are the hev which contain are contained in the heavens. Those heavens that we can see, it's not talking about eternal heaven. It's not when it says that heavens declare the glory of God. No, it's talking about the heavens we can see. It's talking about the heavens that you can look through that scope and you can see things out there further than what you can see with the human eye. That it's all out there. And the Bible says that the heavens declare the glory of God. They let you know that God is real because those things are there. And it is amazing, ain't it? The stars, the sun, and the moon. I've always said this, but I, I, just, I just love the thought that if there was no God and that stuff got there by accident, couldn't it accidentally all fall? I mean, if it got there by accident and it just happened to get there, couldn't it just happen to get out of whack and the sun cook us and melt us? But this the earth has been here for a long time and that ain't happened yet. You know why? Because there's an unseen hand. And it's God's hand which put it there and keeps it there. And He's the one that meted out heaven with the span. He's the one that hung the moon and the stars. He's the one that put the sun in place. He's the one that put it at the right distance. He's the one that done all this. And because of the things that are clearly seen, we can believe the things are invisible, which is God. Amen. It can't happen without Him, I promise you. The heavens declare the glory of God. Then it talks about the firmament showeth His handiwork. All the waters of this world, it's amazing to me, in Ecclesiastes, it talks about all the rivers run into the ocean, but yet the ocean's never full. <laughs> How is that? And then it all returns to its circuits. The Bible talks about that. How's all that? You know the Bible says in the book of Psalms that God says this far and no more for the waters. Why does it ever get full? Why does it ever flood the earth? Because God put a rainbow in the sky and he said it'll never flood again. It won't flood the earth again. But it should be if all the rivers are steady running to the same place and that place or that place. Something ought to be getting full. Something ought to be flooded. And the whole earth ought to be flooded sooner or later. But God had a plan and God made sure Sure that it never flood again. Amen. And he gave us a promise and a covenant with the rainbow in the sky. Next time you see a rainbow, it's more than just colors. Right. It's more than just a ray of sun hitting, uh, uh, the, you know, after the clouds. Now, I, I can't explain a rainbow. 
It's pretty. But it means a whole lot more to me now that I'm saved than it used to. Because God made a promise and God don't know how to break one. But one day after the next, don't you notice this? He says, day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. What's he talking about? Those things that are proving that God is real. The heavens, the stars, the sun, the moon, all this stuff, and the waters. All these things that are declaring the glory of God and proving that God is real. It is saying day after day they speak to us. They're uttering speech. Every day. During a day goes by that those things don't speak to us and say, that's of God. And then the Bible says, night unto night they showeth knowledge. What, is, what am I saying? How do we know God is real? The Bible said night after night. When it gets dark at night. Night after night it shows knowledge. Tonight when it gets dark, go outside and look up in the sky. I preached one time talk, and I had done some statistics on all the stars and how many there are and all that stuff. How many that just that they know about. And it's, it's unimaginable how many numbers of stars there are. How many different galaxies and all that. How many are in a galaxy and all that stuff. But the Bible says night after night they show us knowledge. You want to know God is real? Go outside and get a little knowledge tonight. The Bible says night after night it showeth knowledge. And I like the first three. There is no speech nor language <laughs> where their voice is not heard. In other words, there is no place on this earth you can go where God don't speak and say, I'm real. Right. There's no place on earth you can go where you won't see the sun, moon, and stars, or water, or something to prove that God is real. Psalm 139, verse 13 and 14 says, For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my and listen to this, and that my soul knoweth right well. People can say they don't believe there's a God all they want, but deep down inside of every person, their soul speaks to them and says there has to be something greater than me. There has to be something greater than I. There has to be. There has to be. I believe God's real, don't you? How can I know God is real? To sum it up, in Romans chapter 1, it said, the invisible things of Him. Do you know the invisible things? I'll say this and I'll be done. The invisible things of Him is what keeps people from believing in Him. If God was to appear visibly to everybody in the world, well, you wouldn't need faith, would you? Right, you'd say, there He is. There He is. We know He's real now. I mean, everybody, everybody in this world, if they could see Charles, they'd say, well, we know that's a real person. There He is. But if we told them about Charles, but they never seen Charles, they'd say, well, not so sure if it really is a Charles like that. But because they see Him, they know He's there. The world does not believe in God because of the invisible things of God. But you don't have to see the invisible things. All you got to do is look around at what's already seen. Look around at what's already here. The very fact that you're here proves there's a God. How else could you have gotten here? And I'll say again, they try to say, prove to me there's a God. Prove to me there's not one. Explain to me everything else and how we got here and how everything works. I'll say this and I'm done for real. I gave this illustration before, but I want to give it again. And maybe you wasn't here. Maybe you need to hear it. Maybe you don't forget it. But a, a fancy watch or a cell phone, something complicated as a cell phone, something complicated as a watch, is, is really, it, it's made by the human brain. The human brain comes up and creates these things and invents these things. Don't create. They don't create nothing. They invent these things. And they're amazing how they work. Really, the only people that can explain how they work is the people that made them. 
by seeing all of us at and and explaining to them, and us explaining to them how that phone was made. Send us to the person that invented the cell phone, the house phone. Take us to somebody else who invented a watch, the first watch, invented the watch you got on your arm right now, and let us try to explain to them how that watch works. They'd look at us and laugh. They wouldn't believe it, would they? How many of y'all believe that watch could exist by itself with nobody inventing it? How many of you believe that phone just showed up one day? Wait a minute. How many of y'all believe that watch turned into a cell phone? <laughs> and it works just right. How many of y'all believe that? That's ridiculous, right? Look around us. That would be like saying, hey, we're, I promise you, we're much more complicated than a cell phone. This body, the organs inside, how they all lined up, how they all work, how the blood flows, how the heart, the brain, the eyes, the nose, the breathing, everything else, how we function, it's a whole lot more complicated. Ask a doctor, he can tell you. For you to believe that we got here without God, without there being a God, is like saying that, that watch appeared one day and it works properly and just like it's supposed to. And then it evolved into a cell phone and it got better. And it's still evolving and getting somewhere one day. That's ridiculous. And it's also ridiculous to believe that you exist here like you do and we all here like we are. And we just appeared. And we just turned into something from something else. And everything just works just like it's supposed to. We worship and serve the creature more than the Creator. In other words... The atheist believes more of himself than he does the one that created him. The person that don't believe in God believes he is God. He is the one somehow we made ourselves, And we worship and serve what we think more than what God knows. And we worship and serve the creature more than we do the Creator. I know there is a God and I know He's real. And if you don't know Him, you need to get to know Him today. And the only way to do it, yes, is by faith. Believing without seeing. But the things that you cannot see are clearly seen by the things that are made. Let's all stand.